Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we are in Niagara Falls, New York, here on the American side. And that's one uh, thing that, uh, staying with Jen, one thing I like to do is come over here into, uh, either into Canada or on the American side of Niagara Falls and enjoy not only the, the falls themselves, but the, uh, the fun and tourism that goes along with the falls. So I figured we today we are gonna start our adventure here at Niagara Falls State Park. What? Sure. Hi guys. She wanted she wanted to say hi. Uh, we're here at the gates of Niagara Falls State Park here on the American side of the fall. So I figure we'll walk over and uh, and say hello to the waterfall. Please, follow me. Now Niagara Falls State Park is uh, right here in downtown Niagara Falls, New York. It's a wonderful little park where you can get up close to the falls, also some activities you can do here to engage with the falls. Well, it looks like here that they're actually doing some uh, renovations. See, certain areas are sectioned off by the uh, by this fence. Looks like they're maybe building or working on a new uh, new welcome center there. Oh, is there a little squirrel? Oh, there's a little squirrel hanging out there in the restricted area. Okay, we gotta cross this bridge up here to get to Goat Island. Goat Island is kind of the um, main lookout point on the American side. Oh, look at this bear here. He, uh, he loves New York State Parks. I don't know if this is the mascot for New York State Parks. I wonder, wonder, what, wonder what his name is. Anyone know the name of this? This bear, this mascot here. I can barely contain myself. I love Niagara Falls so much. Coming over here, you can look down in the river. You can see the Maid of the Mist there. There's two sets of ships that go under the falls, the Maid of the Mist and the horn blower. The, uh, the Maid of the Mist is the American, uh, the American side. They were the blue ponchos and the horn blower is the Canadian side. They were, they were the red ponchos. Oh, there you see the uh, horn blower there, getting ready to head over into the falls. Over here is Terrapin Point. This is where you get some of the best views of the Horseshoe Falls, which is the largest section of Niagara Falls. And you can see, uh, see that constant plume of mist. You're actually driving from miles and miles away. You can see that plume rising on the horizon, knowing that you're headed the right direction to see Niagara Falls. Yeah, we can look down there onto Terrapin Point. You can see all the people down there looking at that massive waterfall. And yeah, I just, every time I see it, it blows me away. Niagara Falls, really, truly one of the most beautiful um, natural wonders I've ever seen with my own two eyes. See all the people here on the American side enjoying the falls. And then just right across the river, see all the people there on the Canadian side also enjoying the falls. 
I think someday I want to stay in one of these hotels right here overlooking the falls. Um, I just bet it would be gorgeous to have a view of the falls from your hotel room. Yeah, over here you can actually just get really close to the actual falls and the uh, Niagara River right before it uh, pours over the falls. So we've got the uh, Niagara River here headed towards the falls. And then just look at that drop off right there. Oh my goodness. So that is the plume of mist there in the middle. Just the amazing power of water blows me away. You can actually hear the people screaming as the falls start to pelt them with water. Yeah, you get, you get soaked. You get really wet on those boats. I think this is uh, my goal for the day is to get across into Canada and get to the top of Skylon Tower there. I uh, have never been to the top of Skylon Tower. Um, I'm assuming it has a beautiful view of the falls. You can actually ride an elevator up there to the top. And right there you can see the elevator actually coming down from the top. It has that little yellow elevator on the external part of the tower so that looks like a lot of fun so yeah I think I want to get over there and experience Skylon Tower today actually before we head over to Canada there's actually another observation tower over here on the uh, on the US side that we can check out so let's head down here and see if we can check out the uh, US observation tower before we head over into Canada Here we have the American Falls. You can see the Horseshoe Falls back there in the back. This is the American Falls, the set of falls that is entirely in the United States. And then over here, we have the Observation Tower here at uh, Niagara Falls State Park. So let's uh, head up in that and see if we can get a good peek from up above. All right, this way to the observation deck. So the observation deck is the same place where you get the made of the mist tickets. It said $1.25 to see the observation desk, but when I asked for a ticket, they said, enjoy yourself. So I guess normally it's $1.25. Today it's free. And yeah, right away, the views from up here are amazing. You can see all three falls there. See the skyline of Niagara Falls, Canada. Pretty amazing stuff. And we're not even technically on the observation deck yet. Because here is the official entrance to the observation deck. Alright, so let's check out this view. Right there, that is the, uh, the Canadian border. I guess the uh, American Canadian border is right there in the center of that bridge. We'll be heading over there in just just a few moments. But check out this view here. Wow. And again you see all three falls there. You can see the horn blower and the maid of the mist passing each other in the night. Absolutely gorgeous up here. Be interesting to see how the uh, Skyline Tower, how the views up there compare to the views on this bridge. Over there on the shore, see all the little people looking at the at the mighty falls. And again, that just constant plume of mist that hangs over the falls over there. And from the end of the observation tower, you can look straight across and see Clifton Hill. You can actually see the hill up there. You can see the road heading uh, uphill there. 
There's Clifton Hill. There's the the Ferris wheel. I've been on that Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel actually has some great views of the falls. You just need to make sure you're sitting on the right side. One side, uh, one side of the car has great views of the falls. The other side is great view of the parking lot for the Ferris wheel. Oh, we have to exit here through the Made in the Mist gift shop. Does anyone remember the TV show Wonder Falls? It was on very briefly. It was about a, uh, about a girl who worked at the Made of the Mist gift shop and uh, she could talk to inanimate objects. Inanimate objects would speak to her. It was based off of like Joan of Arc. And uh, so inanimate objects would speak to her and give her hints of things she had to do in her life. And uh, the very first episode, she there was a talking Moldorama lion. So I, I'll never forget that. I'm a big fan of Moldorama. Does anyone else remember this show? So it is time to head to Canada. For those of you who've been following uh, my channel, I think it was 20, 2019 where um, I got stopped at the Canadian border as I was passing over. I had a, um, a flashlight that had a taser attachment on it. The reason for the reason I had that was, you know, I did, I did more like abandoned buildings and things like that back then, did more of the urban exploring. So I thought if I needed a flashlight anyways, I might as well have like a small measure of self-defense attached to that. Unfortunately, I did not realize that um, any form of taser is illegal in Canada. You are not allowed to have them in the country. And I should have done, yeah, I definitely should have done my research uh, beforehand, but I was crossing over the Canadian border. Um, they asked to search my car. I think it was just a random thing or what are they, they profiled me or whatever. You know, I, mean, I think maybe like a, a single, a single man crossing over the Canadian border. Maybe that's, you know, makes you more likely to be searched, but they searched my car. They found the, uh, the, the taser, uh, the taser, the taser flashlight. And, um, it was a, it was an ordeal. They, 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 um, detained me. They, uh, they, they asked me, basically they told me, they, they ran my criminal record. They saw that I had no criminal record whatsoever. Um, and they so basically told me, we're gonna search your car. And, uh, if, uh, if there's nothing in your car, if there's nothing else in your car besides the, uh, the taser flashlight, then you can proceed into Canada. So I waited, it actually didn't take as long. It was only an hour or two of them rifling through my car. They did not find anything, of course. And then they, um, they ended up giving, I had to pay a fine right then and there. So I think it was, I think it was 500 Canadian, which I think translates to about 350 or maybe a little more than that um, in American dollars at the time. So I paid that, went on my way. And since then, I'd, I've, I've pretty much been absolutely uh, terrified every time I uh, cross into the Canadian border. One, re <laughs> one thing is that actually because of that incident, it actually, when I cross into Canada, it flags me. And I've, I've gotten my car searched many a time since then, but I've always been um, extra careful to make sure, you know, there's nothing, absolutely nothing in my car that can cause any problems. Not that I normally travel with, uh, with anything in my car that would be, would be a problem. Uh, I did have a, a, I did have a bottle of, uh, formaldehyde that was given, uh, given to me by my friend, uh, Todd, who runs the, uh, Anatomy of Death Museum. And, and I, I had to make sure, I made sure that wasn't in my car. I didn't know if that was breaking the laws, but it sounded just, it just sounded, uh, sounded suspicious. So I, I decided to, to remove that. I, I was able to give that, hand that off to Jen. Uh, so I wouldn't have to cross with a bottle of formaldehyde in my car. I'd have to explain why I had a bottle of uh, formaldehyde. It's an embalming fluid, I think. I bet I was, it was a bottle of embalming fluid. I didn't want to have to explain that. No, no, I'm not, uh, I'm not a, a uh, mortician, but I do travel cross-country in international borders with a bottle of embalming fluid. Is, formaldehyde is not, is that the same thing as embalming fluid? I don't know, but it was, it was, it was uh, it was embalming fluid, but uh, so yeah, I, I, I get stopped a lot. But in the last couple of years, you know, being up here, staying with Jen in Rochester, I cross into Canada quite a bit. But um, and I don't get stopped every time anymore. It seems like that has wavered, but um, but uh, it makes me nervous every time. And, and they have kind of like a you know a gruff a gruffness to them. Like where are you going? Where are you from? What you doing? Like you know, and I, I think that's intentional. 
I don't think, you know, I think they're, they're trying to be a little, a little confrontational so that like if you are trying to hide something, maybe you might get nervous and then if you're nervous, they're like, ah, this guy's, this guy's hiding something. So I try, try to be calm, try to, try to, try to breathe. And I ended up, I ended up still getting stopped quite a bit. But um, one thing I realized, so what I would do, I'd go over for the day and I would say like, oh, I'm going to Marineland or I'm going to Clifton Hill. And for some reason that I would get stopped a lot. I don't know, I'd still get stopped a lot. So I just started saying, I just started, I wasn't hiding anything, but I was like, started to just give the full truth. I'm like, I have a YouTube channel. I'm going over there to film for YouTube. And then they're like, oh, okay. And actually, like a lot of them will like start chatting. They think that's, you know, they think that's interesting. But I think, I don't know, I think for some reason, just when I when I explain where I'm going, for some reason that, I don't know. I think that maybe sounds suspicious in a way like, you know, someone, oh yeah, I'm just going to hang out in Clifton Hill. I'm not uh, I'm not smuggling anything in my trunk. So that, I don't know, whatever I, whatever I just tell them where I was going, I would get stopped. But if I told them, you know, I tell them just, I'm a YouTuber, tell them, basically tell them, that, again, this is all the truth. I'm not hiding, you know, I'm not necessarily hiding any information or being dishonest in any way. But I found, I guess, it's, uh, being, op being open and honest as possible. You just tell them why, why I'm here, what I'm doing here, and that seems to, to, to work pretty well. But, uh, you know, you, 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 a fair warning to anyone who uh, crosses an international border, know what is allowed in that country. Do not, do not try to bring anything into the country that is not allowed because they will, they will find it and it will cost you. So as I'm getting ready to go, walking back to my car, that actually you can see the Skyline Tower. That's our goal. That's where we're headed. So hopefully we can get across the border and go over there. Um, yeah, it's still as I've been every time I go to the border, I just get nervous. I just get nervous. I'm I'm a not a con I'm a non-confrontational person. So when someone is even slightly confrontational with me, I get I get absolutely uh, absolutely nervous. Oh, actually, I remember this, this is kind of funny. Just random aside. Uh, remember the the one border crossing guard I I told him about you, my YouTube channel. He was actually interested. He wrote down the name of my YouTube channel. No, not not to search it. Just just do friendly. He's like, oh, okay, I'll check it out. And then I remember that I was going back through a different Canadian border and the same guy saw me and recognized me. Oh, you're the YouTuber. So I thought that was, that was crazy. There's many people that go through that border that he actually, actually remembered me. But uh, all right, I really parked really far away from the falls. I kind of forgot there's multiple parking lots. So I just parked at the parking lot in the front. I didn't, re I, I, I forgot that you can, you, there, there's different ways to go. I parked at like the, the parking lot that is right downtown. It's right next to like the tourist attractions. You just park there and then you can walk here. There's actually a parking lot way back there. It's much closer to the falls that I should have parked at. But I've only, I've only been on the American uh, side at the state park here, I think only one time before. So next time, maybe I'll park back there. But anyways, it's, it's a nice walk anyways. A nice relaxing walk through, uh, through this beautiful river by these beautiful falls. So yeah. Let's, let's, let's head over to Canada. And off we go to the land of syrup and yaks. All right, made it safely and soundly into Canada. I'm starting to think, I'm starting to think Canada likes me now. And here we are at the great Skylon Tower. Oh, there you go. You see those elevators heading up to the top there. We got one coming down. I don't know if you can hear them. They actually make a lot of noise from down here. All right. Excited to get up there and, uh, and see what the views look like. It's a really noisy. Yeah, you can see them heading up there, they actually enter the observation area through a little hole in the floor. All right, I'm excited. Let's experience Skylon. It says we're gonna be 775 feet above Niagara Falls. I got some shops and restaurants down here. 
got several uh, gift shops in this bottom area. Before we head up to the tower, let's uh, see what's down below the tower. This escalator here. So we have a big arcade and food court down here. All right, got a fistful of Skylon Tower Fun Center tokens. Let's uh, let's have a good time down here. This robot over here has uh, has caught my eye. This is the Ro Robo Bop. The Robo Bop. I guess we uh, have the tokens in here. He's dead. They do have a feed Big Bertha here. We throw the balls in her mouth. Sadly, Bertha here is out of order. There's the Sidewinder. It's like you roll a ball and move the steering wheel to keep the ball on the snake there. Unfortunately, this is out of order. This is a two-person boxing game here. Sega's title fight. One of the boxers, it's out of order. Remember the winners don't use drugs seal we used to have on arcade machines? It's a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely some vintage arcade machines down here. We have Afterburner and Space Harrier, some classic uh, Sega arcade games. And uh, whatever this is right here, this is Galaxy Force version two. Although I don't think I'm gonna put any tokens in it because it looks to be out of order. Man, that is a lot of Daytona USA machines. There's a bowling alley here. This is Capcom Bowlingo. Unfortunately, looks like it's uh, looks like it's out of order. I have this soccer game here, World Kicks. That you actually kick the bottom of the machine, which is pretty inventive. But it looks like, looks like that's been turned off. I don't think I've seen this before. Boomerang air hockey. So you both play next to each other here, I guess, and then you you got to knock the puck like in a like horseshoe like fashion back and back and forth. Okay, I think I found something to uh, spend my tokens on. A little mini carousel. Of course, the summer carousels is over, but really, summer carousels never ends here on the Carpetbagger channel. There we go. Also got this lone horse here. Lone horse, let's uh, add some tokens in there. Oh, we got one more. All right, the lone horse isn't working, but the carousel, the carousel is, uh, is working. Seriously, why isn't this? Why isn't this horse working? All right, that's two tokens. Oh, there we go. There we go. The horse and the carousel both turning. What a delightful scene. Get the uh, Batmobile fired up here. the uh, Flintstones mobile. Let's see, I can't figure, oh, couldn't figure out where to stick the token. There we go. We got uh, Fred Flintstone racing, racing Batman. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Now this is, if you can balance it just right, you can get it every time. Let's see. Oh, almost, just a little bit to the left. And here's the traditional ski ball. And here's alley hoops. Looks like a cross between basketball and ski ball. Okay, we've got the, the normal ski balls there, but we gotta get them in basketball hoops. Let's... Oh, interesting. All right, let's head back up to the main floor and hop a ride on the elevator to the observation deck. All right, we're heading in. <laughs> and now, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for the Skyward Tower experience? Take some pictures, don't be shy. I'm just a skinny guy. Wow, absolutely amazing, dry dropping. So, so, but what time do you start there? You know, the, uh, so it's oh, so still around the like the tower. Okay, 9 o'clock. I can see the fireworks. That's both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see everything. And how long does it open? Like, uh, around like uh, 11 30. Now, the store. Uh, Alright. Got like a 360 degree view here. Alright, looks like we can let ourselves outside here. Oh, so it's like an open air observation. Wow. There we go, we can see the American Falls there. Hear the water roaring. See that mist, that mist rising from the falls. Okay, this is a pretty amazing view. Yeah, you can see Horseshoe Falls right there. You can see one of the Hornblower boats there currently in the center. You can see the people gathering over there. That's where we were earlier when we were seeing that from the ground. So, pretty spectacular view from up here. Yeah, this island here in the center is what is known as Goat Island. It's actually got some beautiful views from old Goat Island. That's where we were earlier, observing the, observing the falls. And look, what else you can see here from atop the Skylon Tower? If you look there on the horizon, you can see a drop tower jutting from the horizon. Yes, that right there, that is Marine Land. Let's take a look down at uh, at Clifton Hill. You can see the Ferris wheel there. You can see uh, right in the center. You can see uh, Castle of Frankenstein. You can see Dino Golf there below the uh, Ferris wheel. A lot of a lot of fun to be had in a very small area there, Clifton Hill. Oh, did you see that? Did you see that? The volcano. The volcano at the, there it is. The volcano at the dinosaur mini golf just, ex, just erupted. 
You can actually see that black plume of smoke from the American side rising above the city at pretty much all times. So yeah, I don't know if I'm the true authority on this, but this is definitely, definitely the best view of Niagara Falls that I have seen personally. Those hotels look like they might have a good, uh, pretty good view, but uh, as far as like an observation tower or a, or a vista point, I think this, I think the Skyline Tower is the best view that you can get of Niagara Falls. At least from my experience, if you know a better place to see Niagara Falls, leave a comment in the comment section. And up here in the observation area, there actually is a gift shop. Let's see. You know, any you go into any gift shop in uh, Niagara Falls, and you're gonna find lots of maple syrup for sale. So Skylon Tower mugs, little Skylon Tower bell. Ring the bell there. And uh, Skylon Tower plate. That's also got the the Ferris wheel and the uh, horn blower. The snow globes here, and I like these. This is like over in this section of the falls. You got Horseshoe Falls there. You got uh, the Maid of the Mist, and then we got the Skyline Tower, which we're currently in, and those hotels next door. This is a, oh, this is a glitter, a glitter-filled snow globe. I really thought they would have gone with uh, with snow, given uh, given that it actually does snow quite frequently. Oh, here here's one. Here's one with. Uh, with snow, but it's got the uh, got the bridge on it, not the not the tower. And here, in English and in French, it says "lovely to look at, delightful to hold." But if you break it, consider it sold. Somehow, after all shaking all these snow globes and all these different gift shops all over the country, I've yet to break one. I've broken plenty that I've already purchased, but I've never broken one in the gift shop. Got these interesting things too. What do you call these? These aren't really snow globes, but it's got, I guess, the oil and water separating things. You can try to mix it up, but it just goes back to normal there. Yeah, here we have this. It's, it's Niagara Falls. It's got uh, the boats on both sides, like an hourglass there. Oh yeah, like the like the Wicked Witch has the hourglass for the the blue. Spills to the other side. <laughs> All right, going. Oh, 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 thank you. <laughs> I got that for this video, bro. See you tomorrow. I appreciate it. I got you, bro. I'm not gonna leave you upstairs. <laughs> We're gonna go all the way down. One, two, three. Wow! Look at this beautiful view. Here we go. Sink into the ground Now from the tower, it actually looked like it was only a short walk here to uh, from the tower to Clifton Hill. So let's uh, let's walk over there. Yeah, it looks like this path over here will just take you straight into Clifton Hill. Oh look, volcano just exploded again. Here we are. This is the uh, Ripley's, believe it or not, here in Niagara Falls. It's like a building laying on its side here. So you see the little animatronic man scaling the building. 
Now, when I visited Little Canada in Toronto, which is a attraction that has a miniaturized version of uh, Canada, now I uh, I had myself I had myself 3D scanned and placed inside of Little Canada, and uh, they placed me in front of this Ripley's. So I figured we could recreate the uh, the the pose from Little Canada. I'll show it right now. This is me at uh, Little Canada, the little version of me in front of the little Ripley's. Let's recreate a real life version of that. So in Little Canada, the little me is actually standing right under that basket right there where the animatronic guy is going up and down. I'm standing right there. So let's see if we can, uh, if we can recreate this. Okay, okay. I will be, I will be right back. How did that look? A wonderful little display here in the window where the uh, turtle blowing the fan on uh, this little guy in the car here. How strange. See the house of Frankenstein there? They got the, uh, got the Franken coaster running. Okay, just notice something. This building over here used to be the Rock Legends Wax Museum. It was a massive uh, music-themed wax museum. Actually pretty amazing. I visited here on my first trip to Niagara Falls. Now, it's my understanding that it was closed down, but uh, it looks like half of it has been turned into Locomo Land, which is a uh, interactive miniature wonderland. And that's closed right now. I'm gonna have to check that out at uh, some other point. But it looks like there still is a Rock Legends wax museum sign up over there. I'm gonna go check that out. See, it says Rock Legends Wax Museum, their rock world. And uh, if you look over here, this other sign here says, come in and check out our Rock Legends wax figures free. So it looks like while the, the main museum may have closed down, they have some of the uh, old wax figures here inside uh, this gift shop. We will uh, definitely check that out. Okay, I'm pretty excited. I didn't know there was any of uh, this wax museum remaining. There is a dime bag Daryl. We have a Snoop Dogg right there. And over here is Tupac. Yeah, over here we have, uh, have Slash, this trademark top hat and cigarette. Yeah, here we have uh, Gene Simmons from Kiss. Now it says by Pasquale. Ramuno, I guess he created all these wax figures that were in the Rock Legends Wax Museum. Again, exciting to see his work live on. Okay, this one over here is not labeled. If anyone knows who this gentleman in the Jaws shirt is, leave a comment in the comment section. And here we have Mr. David Bowie. I'm not sure what uh, version of David Bowie is. I know he has several uh, alter egos there. Over here, this is uh, Corey Taylor from Slipknot. I could, I could tell, I could tell by his mask. Now, this used to be the entrance here to the uh, Wax Museum. You come, come into this shop, and then you'd use this to actually enter through uh, this turnstile into the Wax Museum. This is uh, Rock Legends there, the neon. Okay, and this was the best figure in the, in the Wax Museum. This is the Marilyn Manson figure. It is the only animatronic in the entire Wax Museum. I mean, it's the only one that actually moves. So you're walking through the Wax Museum, all the different Wax figures, completely static, and then all of a sudden, Marilyn Manson, of all people, pops up and starts moving. It's truly horrifying. It's one of the true, truest scares I've ever had in my life. And then Mr. Alice Cooper right there and his it looks like he's wearing some sort of straight jacket that was definitely a blast from the past for me um, I loved I loved the uh, the rock and roll wax museum here I spoke with the gentleman at the counter actually he recognized me from the video I did before and he said that um, that the, the figures are all still in storage they're all the collection is together they just took some of the better figures and put them on display 
in um, in, the, in the gift shop there, and that I guess the the train museum has taken up the space that was previously uh, the wax museum. This, this buzzard here, this buzzard here, kind of the uh, cousin of the buzzard at uh, Dollywood. This rat wraps, apparently. Hey everybody, let's see who braids the terror of the crystal gates. Get lost in an endless labyrinth, think anyone will know you're absent. Everybody I, I get up! I love all these uh, talking and singing animatronics along the strip here in uh, Clifton Hill. There's lots of trial and lots of error. Suddenly you're staring in the face of terror. And the face is wrong. Now don't be shocked. And don't be squirrely. Don't let your girlfriend see you. And don't early. There's just one way to prove. Go get your tickets and let's get this party started! <laughs> This is brand new here. This is Skipper's Parrot Putt. See the rotating uh, skull and cross putters there. This used to be uh, where the Guinness uh, World Records Museum was. Now it is a indoor uh, mini golf. You can see the parrot up here in, uh, in front. There's a pirate tied up to the pole right there. Oh, he just blinked. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, look at that. I just noticed he has a, instead of a peg leg, he has a wooden, a wooden wing. That's pretty creative. Yeah, he must have kidnapped this pirate and stole his stole his golf course. Yeah, look at this first hole, a Kraken themed hole there. Yeah, the, uh, Kraken has a has a putter there. But this giant rotating ball here on the street. This was actually part of the Guinness World Records Museum. So a little piece of the Guinness World Records Museum still exists here on uh, Clifton Hill. You can just see how big this is. I think you can actually, some of these you can like change the direction. But this one, you can't get a good grip on it, but it's just, I guess, just gonna keep rolling. And speaking of extinct Clifton Hill attractions, this right next door to uh, where Guinness World Records used to be, it is now the Niagara Brewing Company. This used to actually, there used to actually be a drop tower here. This was a WWE Niagara Falls. It was a, a WWE themed shop. They sold uh, WWE memorabilia and they had a drop tower that actually came out of the top of the building here known as the Pile Driver. Unfortunately, I never got a chance to ride the Pile Driver, but you can see the uh, loading station for the uh, the pile driver, it's now just a little uh, balcony for uh, people to sit and drink beers at.
they do a short fireworks show every night down at the falls. So I think we're gonna head out of Clifton Hill and uh, back down to the falls. Can see over here, people gathering to watch the falls at night. Again, that big plume of mist rising above the city. You can see the uh, Skyline Tower over there on the skyline. So the falls illuminated at night. And sometimes they do a light show down here, but uh, I know that this time of year, it says they do a, a 10 o'clock every night, they do a uh, five minute fireworks show. So we're gonna hang out and try to catch the fireworks. The elevator headed up there. Maybe someone going up there to watch the fireworks. Maybe I should have stayed up there to watch the fireworks. Oh, you see the color change. The American Falls turned a ominous color of red. Oh, there you go. Back to, back to white. You can see the horn blower down there. It's all its glowing lights on. Maybe they're going out on a, uh, a firework cruise there to the falls. Oh, there it goes. So thank you for joining me here today at Niagara Falls. A chance to ride up into the Skylon Tower and see the fireworks show at Niagara Falls. And I always love to, to take a look and see what's going on at uh, Clifton Hill whenever I'm here in, uh, in Niagara Falls. Always, always things changing, new things appearing, old things vanishing on uh, Clifton Hill. One of the, one of the roadside uh, meccas, you know, with the Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, Wisconsin Dells, Myrtle Beach, those kind of places where there's always something new uh, in town. But uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country, I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, other fun random stuff. If you would uh, like to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also uh, selling enamel pins. We have some new pins back in the shop. We have the, the two spooky Halloween pins as well as uh, the Carpet Bagger suitcase pin, which I brought back after uh, many people asked me to bring it back to the pin shop. Also doing personalized messages on Cameo. If you're interested in that, check out uh, the link in the description of this video. And of course, all that goes to help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this tower high in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag. It makes a lot of noise. A lot of noise.